Let's talk. Let's talk. Hello and welcome to another Let's Talk. My name is Chris Natney. In today's edition, we speak on school guidance counseling um, within the education sector. And to discuss this topic, we have with me guidance counselors or school guidance counselors that is Christa Lee of the St. Mary's College and the Candice Seishu of the Leon Hess Comprehensive. I want to welcome you both Thank you. Very much. Thank you. to our broadcast. Mm -hmm. uh, let me first ask you um, to, give, to give me, each of you, um, your sentiments on your career. How does it feel um, to, to do what you do? Christa? Um, um, Mr. Satney, I have to say, when you're asking me a question like that, I have to ask how much time. <laughs> because when I started this career, the more I did, the more I loved it. I think this is the best career in the world. When I speak to parents, when I speak to anybody, when I speak to the students, I said, listen, I have the best job at the school. I get to sit down with young people. I get to hear them. I hear them, mm -hmm. you know? I have their issues, and they don't have to put, up, put on any pretenses. I hear people. And people are the best thing on earth. So really and truly, I can't say there's any better profession than school guy. Well, counseling on the whole, this area of helping school counseling, wonderful. That's so good to hear. Mm -hmm. you. Yes, for the most part, I can echo Miss Lee's sentiments on school counseling. It is a very, very rewarding profession. And um, you get to be the cool person at the school. Um, it's not our job to discipline the students per se. We're the persons, we're supposed to be the persons at the school that the students can come to to speak to and open up to and that sort of thing and, and create a very comfortable environment for the students. And it's always my pleasure to be in that position at the school. So like um, Miss Lee said, it's very rewarding and it's ultimately, or overall I should say, is quite a rewarding profession. You spoke about comfortability. Mm -hmm. How important in that, is that in doing your job? Oh, you mean for the students? Yes. Extremely comfortable. Yeah. Um, for the students to be able to go to the school counselor in order to confide in them, because mm -hmm. essentially that's what we're there for, um, it, it's a big deal. And it's, it's very important that students feel comfortable and we create an environment of trust um, and that we are trustworthy because confidentiality is, is Key. extremely important. Um, I mean, we all remember what it's like to be teenagers and so on because essentially the age group that we yeah. deal with at high school is between 11 mm -hmm. and 18. And when you're at that stage of life, your parents are not usually your best friends. <laughs> you're sort of creating your own personality and then you're sort of, um, um, you want to assert yourself as an individual and separate and apart from your parents at that time. You're not a very little, you're not a little child anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, so some t most times the, the, the children are not comfortable speaking to their parents and that's okay. Um, so we would like to be that person at the school, especially where the students can feel comfortable with speaking to us. We create the environment of, tr of trust, um, a confidential environment, and we find out a lot of things about the students. And I guess eventually we'll, we'll tell you mm. about a little bit about the sort of things that we hear about. Definitely, I want to know about that as well. But um, delve a little more. What does the job entail? Not just um, counseling, is it? Counseling well, children. When we say school counseling, we have to always explain and a lot of people don't know so yes we do individual so i have people who are who walk students who walk in and say they would like assistance or teachers or principal parents refer their students so these are individual cases mm -hmm. however we also do classroom guidance that is go into the classrooms and where issues have been identified whether it be from the teacher's point of view or from just dealing with the students, we do classroom guidance, teaching, uh, giving the, the skills, um, deve helping develop the, uh, the students' knowledge base so that they can um, deal with issues. We also do career guidance, mm -hmm. right? So bringing people from workplaces, we do help with job employment, or at least um, exposure to what it is to, be, to go out into the mm -hmm. work of the world. Um, a, a lot of variety of things like that. What, do, what, what, all what, takes, what takes the cake in all, in all of them? Mm. You did speak about career guidance, and we will talk about that, but 
what really takes most, much of your attention in, in all of what you do? Okay, so, for, so sorry. Then you could go ahead. Mm -hmm. For me, I think you have to talk on uh, an individual, mm -hmm. sort of an individual basis on okay, it. So I love individual counseling. <laughs> okay. I love individual counseling. And, but I know there are counselors at schools who prefer guidance counseling going into the classroom. Mm -hmm. There's some of, peop some of the um, school counselors were teachers before. Mm -hmm. And so they, they trained as, as Does counselors. Does that help, Mr. Shum? Um, the teaching, the I, was, teaching. I was not one of those persons who was a teacher before. I okay. went straight into the school counseling. Um, but I actually, I don't, I can't talk for those persons. Maybe, Crystal, were you a teacher before? No, I was. All right. I went into but um, I know that for those persons who, who were teachers before they went into the counseling, mm -hmm. they do say that it, it, there are oh, some so. benefits. Yeah. But I don't think that it's affected my relationship with the students or my work. Um, because I think, I, as you will probably find out eventually, <laughs> this is a sort of profession you have to love it in order for you to do it and the persons who are in it i can tell they give their all i'm not speaking just for me i'm not speaking just for miss lee it is it can be a very heavy job yeah. um there as much as there are lots of successes and it can be very fulfilling it can be heartbreaking as well and most of us have been in this for over 10 years and so for us to be here for as long as we've been here, mm -hmm. it is something that we obviously love and we're giving our all to. So regardless of whether we were teachers or not before, I think everybody's giving it their best and it, it's working out very well for everybody involved. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. We have more to talk about, mm -hmm. but we must take a break now. You're watching Let's Talk. We're due after this. You didn't answer the question. Everyone is at risk for getting a foodborne illness. While most foodborne illness cases are mild and go unreported, Long-term health complications and even death can occur from a foodborne illness. Foodborne illnesses are caused by contamination of food at any stage of preparation. If you are a food handler involved in home-based food production, meat, fish, chicken or a big shop, as a food vendor, how you prepare food can put your customers at risk. Do you know the risks and how to avoid them? The St. Lucia Bureau of Standards can help you. For more information, contact the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards at 456-0546 or email slbs at candw.lc or visit the website at www.slbs.org.lc. St. Lucia Bureau of Standards, making quality and standards our way of life. Welcome back to Let's Talk as we continue our discussion on school guidance counseling with our two school guidance counselors, Ms. Ishu and Ms. Lee. Um, we were speaking about um, the areas that seem more important to you, but what takes up more of your time, Christelle? Um, definitely, because of the ratio, individual takes up a lot of time. Mm -hmm. However, when we say about allocating time, we need to give a lot of precedence to dealing with la the larger numbers, the classroom gu guidance as well as the large group guidance, mm -hmm. where we would... Um, for example, the career guidance, or if I'm doing um, school leaving for Form 5s, right? Mm -hmm. We need to pay a lot of attention to that so because then you can affect a larger number at the same time. Mm -hmm. So when I, when I talk about a ratio of mm -hmm. allotting time, we need to invest mm -hmm. a lot of time into the large group guidance. I was um, um, listening to you while we were talk, talking about some difficulties that will come in. Um, probably you could expand a little bit on, on some of those um, difficulties, issues that you're facing handling, handling your job. Okay. Um, I remember, I think the counselors had a, a career showcase, the first one, a few years ago, and I did an interview with one of the radio stations. And one of the questions was very similar to what you just asked about some of the, the, the things that we experienced that are a little difficult. Mm -hmm. um, and I started going on and on, and, and after, um, I think some people called in and they could not believe some of the issues that we have to deal with on a daily basis. Um, and it makes the job, it daily. does make a daily basis, it makes the job very, very difficult at times. When I first started, I remember thinking to myself, I didn't understand that this was going on in St. Lucia. Almost every other case that came to me Expand was an incest case. It was almost once a week I was getting an incest Outrageous. case. And I couldn't believe it. I, I said to myself, uncles and cousins and so on sleeping with their underage, 11 and 12. I mean, it, it, was, it was really, it, w it blew me away. And I remember thinking for a minute, I said, am I in the right um, um, profession? 
can I handle this? You know, because at some, at, at you really, when we're going through our master's program, a lot of us had to get our own counseling because we had to make sure that we were fit for the job because some of the things that we have to it's experience to as counselors, we have to make sure that, you know, we can deal with them um, because the information that we get, there was a suicide recently at one of the high schools on the island and um, with this sort of, when this sort of thing happens, sometimes what happens is that other, other people sort of imitate, especially since it was a 17 year old and so mm -hmm. on, you'd have other children who would. And within, a, within maybe two months or so on, I had 12 suicidal ideations, students coming to me saying, you know, I'm, and these are situations you cannot leave, you have to these report things are very immediately. very sensitive, yes. but we must talk about them, Christelle. Mm -hmm. There are so many things that happen. Um, Candice only mentioned the suicide. She's mentioned two of them. We have so many things going on. Um, we have people, the, the drugs. Mm -hmm. We have, so I'm talking all across the island, mm -hmm. what we're seeing. We're seeing um, interpersonal relationships which are inappropriate between students. There are a lot of sexual issues and so on. Um, Oh, there's so many things to deal but, with. But you yourself, how do you take away from, from it? You're talking about getting counseling yourself, but what do you take yourself away from it? Um, and, t and not putting yourself, your person, your personality, or your thinking in it so that you mm -hmm. can do a good job. For me, I think that was part of the training. Because when we went to school, we understood. Apart from understanding yourself and reflecting and be able to know where, where your boundaries, where your limitations are. Because, of course, every counselor has to know that so that if there's a case that they think that they would be affected with and they can't deal with it objectively, they need to refer it. And that's, these are things that you, ethical things that you, you learn at school. And even dealing in how self-care, self-care is part of it. You, because if you're not well, you can't help. You can't make some or, or encourage somebody to be well if you're not well. Mm -hmm. You hurt mm -hmm. if you are hurt, you know? And these are things we teach, but these are things we have to practice as well. We know that there are so many difficulties and we know that a lot of things come up and you have to deal with them. But there are good results in mm -hmm. reality in dealing with those situations. Tell us, you know, not specifically of, situ of a situation, but of course, you know you, you, you come across some very heavy things to deal with. But the results turn out right, mm -hmm. turn out well in some yeah, cases today. Yeah, we do. Um, like Crystal was saying a while ago, um, and like you just mentioned, lo a lot of what we're mentioning now, not particularly individual or, or not specific to the schools that we're at, um, and there's difficulties that we all experience, and we do have shared successes as well. I'm sure all of us have had situations where we deal with students. And I remember one particular student, I speak about her all the time. Um, she was about to drop out. And, um, I, um, and you know, through the counseling, and she says it to this day, through the counseling, and I'm sure Crystal has, has yeah. cases like that. Um, she is now at one of the, the, the premier hotels on the island. She's moved up. She was about to drop out of school. She was taking care of her mother, who, who was an invalid, and she had lost all hope. She was 14 years old, and she's now married, and she's, she's completely successful. And she says it all the time. She says, Miss, you know, if it wasn't for y'all, or if it wasn't for the program, mm -hmm. I don't know how I would have got it. So we are that we're I, we're happy that we're there we're there for a reason and um we're serving our purpose and we're helping and the students are, are and the w i have to i have to say when i first started counseling it was sort of there was a stigma attached to it you know boy i'm crazy i, I don't want to go to the counselor yeah. You have the students now who mm. are volunteering. They're, All right. they're well, knocking on the door every two know. seconds. Well, let me tell you what, we've run out of time. Oh, but right. you can't have one program for such a topic. Mm -hmm. So we'll continue with a second program. We want to thank you so much for being part of this program. Join us next time when we will continue this discussion on school guidance counseling. I'm Chris Satney on behalf of the entire production team thanking you for watching. Until next time. Let's talk. Let's talk.